Hey guys, I'm Rick with Techspin, and while I'm working on three, count them, three episodes simultaneously, I've done some testing, overclocking the new i9-9900K chip from Intel with a lot of help from MSI, who really helped me understand how to easily overclock these new 9th gen Intel CPUs to get good results. I thought I'd put out a quick suggestion guide to help others who are thinking of upgrading. And Enermax also helped out a lot with their LookFusion 240mm AIO water cooler. So if you're thinking of a serious system upgrade, as I have been for this last year, then this episode is made especially for you. The Enermax LookFusion all-in-one cooler makes your case stand out with addressable RGB lights, the CPU pump has a stunning flow indicator visible through the see-through cover and frosted ring illumination on the fans mounted to a 240 mil rad. Check out the Lick Fusion down below. So I bet you're thinking the answer is, what, you still here? Go out now and buy an i9-9900K or 9th gen CPU now! But the truth is, it depends on what you used your computer for and how important improving certain things like Windows boot time, launching your favorite AAA game title, or other things are to you. As the easiest comparison tool, I'll be using Cinebench multi-threaded benchmarks sourced from Guru3D.com as a standard to determine each CPU's capability, and the prices quoted are all from Amazon US. And a reality check. Obviously, your productivity is not going to be solely running Cinebench all day. So you'll notice improvements most in heavy use applications like heavy gaming and rendering, and not much at all for typing in Word. Also, I'm gonna state I'm not an Intel fanboy, but I've been heavily into researching CPUs for rendering and a bit on Threadripper, and especially top of the line Intels are what I know pretty well. First off, do you have a computer from five years ago or more? Do you want to get to the Windows 10 desktop in under 20 seconds? How about 10 seconds? Newer motherboards have a great development called an M2 slot, and solid state hard drives called SSDs have evolved to the point where they can fit onto a chip which goes in the M.2 slot. These are called NVMe or PCIe M.2 drives, and they can reach 3000 gigabits or more versus the slower around 500 gigabit SSD drives. When you install Windows onto this, your system becomes super fast to load and very responsive, which you'll notice the most. If you play lots of Steam or GOG games, then you can install them on the M2 drive, or you can use a slower and much cheaper SSD to run games faster than a conventional hard drive. So instead of dropping cash on brand new hardware, you could get a serious upgrade by getting yourself a secondhand system with an M2 slot and picking up an SSD if you need one. All right, let's talk about our scenarios. So number one, uh, basic, we'll be talking about a typical Facebook, Microsoft Word, YouTube watching PC. If we're going to go back a few years, even the i5-6600K or the venerable i7-2600K is still a very powerful chip, about on par with the Ryzen 3 2200G on Cinebench according to Guru3D.com data, and still great if you want to play games with a decent FPS or even handle a bit of video rendering. The i7-2600 was released in 2011. You can find a used one from around 100 to 130 bucks, but for something new, there's the i3-8100 for 115 bucks. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 3 2200G is new and super cheap at 96 bucks, beating the Intel score at this level. No matter if you cheer for AMD or Intel, those Ryzen numbers for this price simply can't be beat for this tier. But don't take my word for it, as I'm certainly not an AMD expert, so please feel free to chime in down in the comments and let us know what suggestions you have for each AMD CPUs for each level. Second scenario, an intermediate PC. Light Photoshop, casual gamer, and streamer. So this tier will see a lot of benefit in jumping up to a current gen AMD or Intel CPU. Actually, AMD in this tier really stands out for price per benchmark. The AMD I'm recommending here is the Ryzen 5 1600X, at 150 bucks. That's a real steal for that performance. Plus, it can overclock to four gigahertz. And you could always spend 10 bucks more to get the Ryzen 5 2600 with about 3% more power at stock, though if you overclock it to 4.2 gigahertz, you can get up to 8% power gain, but you need a hefty air or AIO water cooler. 
Now, if you're looking for Intel CPUs, I mentioned the i3-8100, but after using it for six months and being a power user, I kind of regret it and would choose an i5-8400 for $235 US dollars or an i5-8600K on sale for $240, which can overclock to about 4.8 gigahertz for a 37% improvement. I would not recommend a new i5-9600 for 270 bucks unless you don't want to overclock. The 9600 has roughly 23% more power than last gen's 8400. However, overclocked, the 9600 only hits 1207 Cine benchmarks at 5.1 gigahertz, so the $30 premium for new, but 1% power gain is simply not worth it. All right, scenario three, a power user, heavy Photoshop, After Effects, video editing, gaming, and streamer. Now I was in this boat because my current editing and rendering machine is an i7 7700K and I sat out Intel's 8th gen processor as it required a new motherboard and I had tapped myself out with my MSI Z270 X-Power Titanium and 64 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4-3000. But a 7th gen 7700K upgrading to 8th gen 8700K, you'd get about 32% more processing power though a leap to a 9700K, you'd see 47% more power, which is substantial and worth it for 10 bucks more at $410 on Amazon US. Because the 8700K is already a powerhouse, only about 8% more power would be gained from upgrading to 9th gen, so I'd recommend stay or go 9900K. Or for a real step up, a Ryzen 7 2700X for 316 bucks gives you 20% more power than the 9700K for $100 less. Another win for AMD in this tier. Hmm. I've always known that AMD gives Intel a run for the money, but it really shows here. Keep in mind, Intel CPUs are better at some tasks than AMD and vice versa. Research the CPU you're thinking of before you buy. But here's the gold. The i9 9900K does 2044 points stock and 2,160 points overclocked at five gigahertz. Plus, I've actually done the five gigahertz overclock myself, and it's very stable with all the cores and hyper-threading. If you're producing content or want the best desktop processor, that'll be 580 US dollars. But the overclock will cost you. You'll need a power supply with 800 watts or more. I'm using this Seasonic Focus 850 watts, which handles the demand well. Furthermore, you'll need a Z390 board but you may be able to BIOS update a Z370 board to handle the 9900K flash first, of course, before you put in the new chip. For God tier level, both the Intel specialized $1,000 i9-7900X, which requires a costly $220 to $350 socket 2066 uh, board, and the AMD Threadripper 1950X, or 2950X, which costs 800 or 900 bucks respectively, are out of the reach of most. Wait, what? The 1950X is on sale for 550 bucks? Well, holy crap. For 30 bucks less than the 9900K, you get God mode computer CPU strength, boasting a 28% improvement over the 9900K overclock and 32% increase over stock. However, Threadripper boards start at 300 bucks. Most are under 400 and you'll need a cooler for the larger TR4 socket. Speaking of that, with water cooling, a Cinebench of 3,400 is possible. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, Cinebench R15 isn't the end all of tests, but it is a good comparison tool to measure CPU strength. Now I heard about how good AMD's Threadripper was, but this was quite revealing and shocking. Now it's true that Premiere Pro Update 12.1 has hardware acceleration that works with Intel CPUs to speed up sequence exporting from 20 to 30% on average. So that's one reason to choose the i9 9900K. And enabling that acceleration might not necessarily work for you. It didn't work for me with an i7 7700K and GTX 970 or 1070. What are your thoughts on the state of Intel right now? Can you believe this disparity for price for performance? And what CPU do you have or will you choose for your next build and why? Please join the conversation below. As for me, I was super excited to research and make this episode, but now with that bombshell, I'm somewhat sad I could be having 30% more God tier power for 30 bucks less than I paid for my i9. At least I got this cool soccer ball. I'd like to send a special thanks both to Enermax, who sponsored me for their excellent Liquid Fusion 240mm AIO water cooler, which helped me to do the overclocking, and MSI 
for sponsoring the Z390 Tomahawk motherboard. An excellent choice if you're considering Intel chips. And I'll do a review of this here very shortly. MSI also helped me with some technical details and helped me understand that it can be easy and stable. Thanks again, guys. Just a quick reminder, if you want to connect with us online, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at TechSpinReview. You can also help by buying through our affiliate links, visiting our wish list on Amazon, or support us directly on Patreon, both links below. So anyone out there buy a 9900K and just get a pang of buyer's remorse along with me, or if you got some impressive Cinebench results, tell us along with your setup. I might consider doing some side-by-side -side CPU comparisons if I get the time. We'd like to hear your ideas for upcoming episodes, so feel free to let us know what you'd like to see next. And please do hit that thumbs up button if you like this video or tell us how we can improve for next time. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and we do respond to most. So if you have a question or if we miss something, probably a lot in this episode, but please help us down below. <laughs> please tell us down below and let us know what you'd like to see next. Thank you all very much for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now. But don't take my word for it as I'm certainly not an AMD expert. So flee, so fleas, fleas, fleas jumping. Be careful. <laughs> oh my God.